all these conditions and experiences in life which you entered into, and which when pleased seemed good, and when displeasing seemed evil, were merely incidents created by desire to quicken in you, you certain soul faculties, which would enable you to recognize the truths that I, within, wished at the time to impress upon your consciousness. The apparent evil was the negative aspect of the fruit of the tree, which always lured you on by its fair appearance and by the sweetness of the first taste to eat and enjoy to satiation, or until its harmful effects manifested and became a curse, bringing final disillusionment, which served to turn or force you back in humiliation to me, your true self, who, through the new consciousness thus aroused, was then enabled to extract the essence of the fruit and incorporate it into soul substance and tissue. Likewise, the apparent good was the positive aspect of the fruit, which, having pushed forth of itself into expression, through your recognition of and obedience to its urge, was now permitting you to enjoy its happy and natural effects, and to receive the outward benefits of my loving inspiration and guidance. This you, who were being led by desire through all these experiences, was only your human personality, which the real you was training and developing and preparing so it could become a perfect instrument for your use in the expression of my ideal, ever seeking to manifest its perfection in the flesh. All this you did, not only compelling your, your human personality to eat, but to live on the fruit of the so-called tree of knowledge of good and evil, until you had seen and known all the so-called evil, and from living on and with it had discovered in it the germ of so-called good, plucked it, lifted it up, and turned it right side out, so that you from that time on knew that good and evil had no real existence and were but relative terms, descriptive of outside conditions, looked at from different viewpoints, or were only different outer aspects of a central inner truth, the reality of which was what you sought to know, be, and express. During the latter ages you have been, as it were, gradually throwing off layer after layer of human consciousness, dissipating the mist or glamour thrown around your mind by the intellect, subduing, controlling, spiritualizing, and thus clarifying the intellect itself until now you are beginning to awaken and to see, through the ever-thinning remaining layers, occasional glimpses of me, the one great reality, within all things. All this time you, the omnipotent, impersonal I am of you, were consciously and intentionally doing all this, not for the purpose of getting the mere knowledge of earth conditions and things, as your intellect has so loudly and authoritatively proclaimed, but in order that you might harvest what you had sown in the dim ages past, and could manifest my perfect ideal on earth, even as you are now manifesting it in the impersonal estate, your heavenly home. You, remember, are the great impersonal I, who am doing all this, who am continually changing, in outward appearance, but who within am eternally the same. The endless flow of the seasons, the spring with its busy sowing, the summer with its warm, restful ripening, and autumn with its bounteous harvesting, the winter with its cool, peaceful plenty, year after year, life after life, century after century, age after age, are only the outbreathing and inbreathing of my ideal as I inspire it forth through the earth and through you, my attribute, and through all my other attributes during the process of unfolding in outer manifest state the perfection of my nature, 
Yes, I am doing it through you because you are an expression of me. Because only through you, my attribute, can I express myself. Can I be? I am because you are. You are because I am expressing myself. I am in you as the oak is in the acorn. You and I are as the sunbeam is the sun. You are a phase of me in expression. You, one of my divine attributes, are eternally trying to express my perfection through your mortal personality. Just as an artist sees in his mind the perfect picture he wants to paint, but his hand cannot quite portray with the crude mediums of brush and color the true quality and effect he sees, so do you see me within yourself and know we are one, but always are prevented by the imperfection of the earthly material of your human personality. With its animal body, its mortal mind, and selfish intellect, from perfectly expressing me. Yet I created your body, mind, and intellect in order to express myself through you, the body I made in the image of my perfection, the mind I gave to inform you of me and my works, the intellect I gave to interpret my ideal as I inspired it to the mind. But you have been so distracted by the human phases of this body, mind, and intellect and their outer uses, that you have forgotten me, the one and only reality within, whose divine nature I am ever seeking to express to and through you. The time is soon here when the outward uses shall no longer distract, and my reality shall be revealed unto you in all the glory of its perfection within you. You, when I thus reveal myself, shall not be more blessed than before, unless that which I have revealed shall become the bread of life to you, and you shall live and manifest the life it reveals. Now I have purposely not stated clearly all the how and why of these things, for I have reserved for you, when you call upon me so to do, and are capable of receiving it, an inspiration from within with a far more comprehensive vision of the unfoldment and development of my divine ideal and its final perfected expression than is herein pictured. If I were here to tell the real meaning of my many manifestations before you were consciously capable of experiencing its truth, you neither would believe my words nor could you comprehend their inner application and use. Therefore, as I begin to awaken you, awaken in you a realization that I am within, and more and more cause your human consciousness to become an impersonal channel through which I can express, will I gradually reveal to you the reality of my ideal, dissipating one by one the illusions of the ages which have hidden me from you, enabling me thereby to manifest through you my heavenly attributes on earth in all their humanly divine perfection. I have herein given you but a glimpse of my reality, but just to the extent that that which has been revealed becomes clear will more be opened up unto you from within, and far more wonderful than this now seems to you. For my ideal within, when it finally and completely shines through its mantle of flesh, will compel you to worship and glorify me far above all that your human mind and intellect now conceive of as God. Before you can become conscious of all this and can truly comprehend it, you and your human personality must make it possible for me to reveal it by turning within to me as the one and only source, bringing to me your measure absolutely empty of self and with mind and heart as simple and trusting as those of a child. Then, and then only, when nothing of the personal consciousness remains to prevent my feeling you full to overflowing with the consciousness of me, can I point out to you the glories of my real meaning for which this whole message is but the outer preparation. <laughs>